Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be comparing four cars with three letter names. We are in the 2017 Subaru BRZ, which I do have a full review posted of, so I'll include a link to that in the video description. It includes details about the changes which they've made to this model year. Now we're going to be comparing this to the new Mazda MX-5, as well as the Fiat 124 Spider. And because everyone's going to ask, we'll also include my Honda S2000 or S2K so I can fit that three letter uh, word thing that I said the beginning of this video. So anyways, we're going to get started with the engines, and I wanted to do a quick little mental challenge here, so I'm going to tell you the difference in horsepower, torque, and at what RPM for all four of these vehicles, the engine size and layout, hopefully all in one shot, uh, and so you know that I'm not, you know, just uh, making stuff up and cheating along the way. So, starting with the Subaru BRZ, this is a 2-liter boxer 4-cylinder, it's producing 205 horsepower at 7,000 RPM, and it's producing 156 six pound feet of torque at 6400 rpm moving on to the mazda mx5 that car has a two liter inline four cylinder engine it produces 155 horsepower at 6000 rpm it produces 148 pound feet of torque at 4600 rpm moving on to the fiat 124 has a 1.4 liter inline four cylinder engine turbocharged produces 160 horsepower at 5,500 RPM, and it produces 184 pound-feet of torque at 3,200 RPM. And finally, the Honda S2000 has a two-liter inline four-cylinder, produces 240 horsepower at 8,300 RPM, and it produces 153 pound-feet of torque at 7,500 RPM. Holy cow, that was a lot of numbers. Bonus round, red line for each vehicle, Honda S2000, 8,800 RPM, Fiat 124, 6,250 RPM, Subaru BRZ 7400 RPM and the Mazda MX-5 6800 RPM. Other journalists get on my level. All right, that's not really that impressive to just recite numbers. It's it's more uh, exciting to actually talk about the details of the vehicle. So, speaking of these engines, some of the different characteristics between them, the BRZ and the Honda S2000 relative to the other vehicles in this group are high power, low torque. The Mazda MX-5 is low power, low torque. And the uh, Fiat 124 is high torque on relatively low power. And so they each have their own kind of unique characteristics in that regard. Uh, the BRZ and the S2000 revving a bit higher. Uh, and then the uh, 124 Spider has the most torque early on. So you'll get the biggest punch, uh, lower RPMs, versus these other vehicles really like to be uh, rung out as far as the RPMs is concerned. Get them in those higher RPM where they produce peak torque and peak power uh, and have some fun with them. Okay, so moving past the engine and looking more into the weight of these vehicles, this is where the MX-5 really shines. It's only weighing 2,330 pounds. The Fiat 124 with the manual transmission is about 100 pounds heavier than that, 2,400 some. And then the Subaru BRZ and the Honda S2000 are both floating around 2,800 pounds. So 500 more pounds uh, almost versus the MX-5. Now, if you look at power to weight ratios, because the BRZ and the S2000 have more power, they do have better power to weight ratios than the MX-5 and the 124. But then if you start to look at zero to 60 times, I was looking at car and drivers just to be unanimous across the board. The Mazda MX-5 with a zero to 60 time of 5.8 seconds, the Subaru BRZ at 6.2, and then the 124 and the S2000 at 6.3. So even though the Mazda MX-5 has the least power uh, and one of the lower power to weight ratios, it's the quickest of the group. So you get the benefit of having the least amount of weight, which makes it a lot of fun to drive, and it's the quickest at low speeds. Um, so you know, once you get up into the higher speeds, you're gonna want more power to get up to those higher speeds, but in lower speed corners, uh, which these things are kind of made for, the MX-5 does it the best. Now, as far as gearing, this is something that really fascinates me because I think you can change the way a car behaves dramatically through gearing. One example I think that does a poor job is a Cayman. Uh, they have really tall gearing, and as a result, it's not really competitive with the 911s. Uh, a great example, I think, is the Ford Mustang. They've got really good gearing, nice and aggressive in those, and plus you can get, update the final drives. Well, an interesting thing comparing these four vehicles is that uh, the Subaru BRZ and the S2000, relative to all of each other, uh, have the most aggressive gearing. 
So what I mean by that is, let's say you take all of these cars and you put them in first gear and you go at 6,000 RPM. Whichever car is traveling the slowest at that set RPM will have the most aggressive gearing. And so in this case, uh, for gears one through three, that ends up being uh, typically the BRZ and the S2000. And so they have the most aggressive gearing, which means you're going to have higher wheel torque in those gears uh, versus the competitors. Now, that's just looking at gearing, not the engine torque. So that's a good thing to have, I think, for the BRZ and the S2000. The other really interesting thing about that is, is that you sacrifice top speed with aggressive gearing. Well, the BRZ and the S2000, because they have high, such high red lines, actually have higher top speeds in gears one through four across the board versus the MX-5 and versus the Fiat 124. So they have the best of both worlds, more aggressive gearing and higher top speeds in gears one through three, which are kind of your fun gears. We're getting into a bit too much snow here for these tires, so probably gonna need to turn around. Yep, gonna get a little sideways if I don't. So we're gonna turn around. Uh, but as I was saying, you know, keep this casual, uh, the uh, gearing in the S2000 and the BRZ is what you want uh, because they've got those high red lines. Now the Fiat 124 makes up for it because it has a lot of torque early on. So it doesn't necessarily mean your wheel torque is higher in the BRZ or the S2000. Uh, it just means they're geared more aggressively, so they're going to be more fun. All right, back onto some dry rows. Now, one of the other differences I want to talk about is the throttle between these four vehicles. Uh, and one of the advantages that the Honda has is that it's just older than these other cars. And so as a result, it has a mechanical throttle body. It's the only one of the group which has that. And so, you know, the unfortunate thing is that mechanical throttle bodies, they're just the best. I mean, they're going to give you the best response. They're going to give you the most control. Uh, you don't have to worry about electronics stepping in and doing something that you don't want them to do. And so from a throttle perspective, the S2000 has the best throttle response and the best throttle feel to it. That said, honestly, all of these cars are good and a lot of modern cars have rev hang. I haven't noticed in, in these vehicles, uh, which is nice. The, I have not tried out the manual version of the 124, but as far as the MX-5 and the BRZ, I do like the manual transmissions in both of them uh, and the throttle pedal, the way it feels. You get great response in this BRZ. You also have fantastic response in the MX-5. Um, and you know, with the uh, turbocharged 1.4 liter in the Fiat, you do get a little bit more delay as far as torque is concerned, but I had no complaints driving the automatic as far as the throttle is concerned. Uh, just overall, the most fun, the best, out there uh, just because it's mechanical is the S2000 and it also allows for really easy rev matching um, and you know starting from a stop and things like that so I do like the throttle in the S2000 the best now what I don't like the best in the S2000 is the brakes and so honestly of the group it is the least confidence inspiring when you are hard on the brakes uh, the BRZ also not quite as confidence inspiring as the 124 or the MX-5 though the thing I do like about the BRZ is that there's no punchiness to the brake pedal at all. No matter what position it's in, how hard you slam on it or just tap it, um, it's always this nice progressive, it's almost linear build to it of the braking in the BRZ versus the MX-5 and the Fiat 124 where you can get a little bit of that punchiness from the power brakes um, which kind of step in and help you. The BRZ it feels a lot more manual um, and so I do like that about it. That said, uh, the most confidence inspiring really comes down to weight um, and the way the MX-5 and the 124 feel under braking is fantastic. Honestly, they're all great, uh, I'd say, except for the S2000 doesn't feel all that fantastic. Uh, but, you know, these cars are lightweight and as a result, braking comes uh, very quickly and it's it's a fun thing to do moving on to the gear shifts in these vehicles uh, I'd say the best feel which is crazy that I'm gonna say this but I think the best feel is the s2000 it's so direct it's so precise it's so short it's got this nice notchiness to it where it feels exactly in place I really like the shifting in the s2000 um, and all of these honestly are good like like I said earlier I haven't driven the 124 manual I hope to eventually um, all of them are great it's just the the S2000 feels the most precise as far as gear shifts are concerned. As far as the clutch, however, I would say my favorite is the Mazda MX-5. Has nice travel to it, and it has a nice, uh, you know, build in how much it's clamping down on that uh, clutch disc, uh, depending on where you are. So you have a nice large range, which gives you a lot of control, and it leads to really easy shifting and really easy to learn that vehicle. Um, it's not vibrating or anything like that. A nice clutch in the Mazda MX-5. Now, one thing to note is that the Fiat 124 
uh, is using the previous gen, the NC uh, Mazda's gearbox for the manual transmission. Um, you know, people say that that's because the NDs can't handle the torque. I would imagine Mazda just didn't want to give them their latest and greatest transmission that they're using in the NC. That's just speculation, or and the ND rather. That's just speculation. You know, there could be torque reasons for it, but you know, it's 184 pound-feet of torque versus 150, and if the Mazda can't handle that much more, like I kind of doubt that. I feel like the reason is just Mazda didn't want to give them their amazing transmission, uh, so they held them back with the NC. Either way, it's probably great. It's probably good fun, um, and you probably won't notice a huge difference driving those two. Now, talking about the steering, actually all four of these vehicles have electronic power steering, and I think as a result, you don't get a ton of feedback, a whole lot of communication out of any of these steering wheels, uh, but the cool thing about them is that they're all extremely responsive. They're all, you know, very direct, very responsive. The second you turn that wheel in, the car is turning in with it, and as a result, I think they're all fun to drive. I think one difference worth pointing out is that the BRZ has the shortest ratio of the group and then the S2000 and then the Mazda MX-5 and the 124 both have a 15.5 uh, steering ratio, so the tallest of the group. And as a result, you turn the wheel more in the MX-5 and the 124. I think the short ratio in the BRZ uh, makes it the most fun steering of this group because you just turn it a little bit and the car turns a lot and that's just kind of a fun thing to have. Uh, whether or not there's any real benefit to it it feels good you get a nice weight build as a result of having those lower ratios and so it's got a nice feel to it all of them honestly are pretty comfortable not too much force required maybe the s2000 uh you know with the most force required uh, but i really do like the steering ratio in this brz um, and overall i really can't complain about the steering systems in any of these cars now, practicality, this is something I do want to mention. Um, if you're getting into one of these cars, you probably don't care too much about practicality, but it is something I wanted to at least bring up. Um, as far as visibility, all of them are fairly similar, no complaints about that. As far as space within the cabin, you're probably going to be the best off in this BRZ. Uh, the MX-5, I fit in all, all the vehicles just fine. I'm 6'1 and I fit just fine. The reason I say uh, this one you might fit the best is because it does have a telescoping uh, and it moves up and down the steering wheel. And so you don't have that in the other vehicles, in the MX-5 and the 124. You can move the steering wheel up down. In the S2000, it's fixed in place. So this is the one that gives you the most flexibility with the steering wheel. And as a result, I think it accommodates the largest range of humans. Of course, it's the only one with rear seats. It's the only one that has a hard top. Uh, and so it's got the most cargo space, things like that. So it's kind of the obvious obvious pick as far as practicality is concerned. Second, I would give to the 124 Spider. The S2000 does have a larger trunk than the 124 Spider, but there are some advantages to the 124. You've got the steering wheel, which you can move up and down, but one of the bigger advantages of the 124 and the MX-5, the 124 has the longest range uh, as far as fuel economy of any of these vehicles. So you can go the furthest distance on a tank. It has the highest uh, highway fuel economy rating of the group. Uh, the S2000 is really the only one here that kind of sucks at fuel economy um, and then the others are doing pretty well the 124 with 36 miles per gallon on the highway uh, and then the Mazda MX-5 I believe with 34 on the highway so both of those pretty fuel efficient uh, this one the BRZ were at uh, 29 on the highway and then the S2000 I think is 24 on the highway so not that great fuel economy in the S2000 uh, as a result you know it's it's gonna be the least practical it's the loudest uh, of the group as far as the interior noise uh, you don't have a, the, the travel distance like you have in the 124, um, although you do have a nice size trunk. So, you know, I've filled up my S2000 with 200 miles on the tank, and it's like, what? This is crazy. This is actually worse than my uh, STI was as far as range is concerned. So it's nice to have range, and that's what the uh, 124 and the MX-5 offer. Now, the final question, and perhaps the most important question, which one of these vehicles is the most fun to drive? And you know, I have a clear pick here, I have a clear winner, uh, and it is the MX-5. As I mentioned in my MX-5 video, best car you can buy for less than $50,000, and I'm still sticking with it. I haven't experienced a car under 50 grand that's been more fun than the MX-5. This BRZ is very close behind it, though. This BRZ is good fun. The MX-5, it's the lightest of the group, and it's the quickest of the group at low speeds. You can't beat that. Lightweight cars, they're super nimble, they're super playful, they're predictable, uh, and that's what's so great about the MX-5. I'd put the BRZ in second place, 
as a result it's got really fun steering it's got aggressive gearing which I really do like uh, and so you're, you're actually pretty quick in this vehicle you know a lot of people complain about the power but this car is good fun and it can actually pull pretty well especially with the new updated final drive ratio it's got a 4.3 rather than the 4.1 which came standard I really enjoy driving this Subaru BRZ so I'm giving it second place now third place I'm going to give to the S2000 it's just got a really great feel to it it feels like a modern car it's got fantastic shifting, really fun steering in it, um, just all around good fun car to drive and you know it really loves to sing out to those higher RPMs. Even though it's not quite as quick as these other vehicles, uh, there's something about it that's very special while you are driving it, uh, very mechanically satisfying as I've said in my review. And finally I'm ending with the 124 and this is a bit biased because I haven't driven the Abarth and I haven't driven the manual transmission and my opinion may change about the vehicle when that time comes. But having not driven it, uh, it's the least thrilling of the group. Uh, it's kind of more of a, a tour uh, that happens to be fun to drive versus all of the other ones seem to focus on being fun to drive first uh, and then you know they, they sacrifice everything else. The Fiat, you know, it's a good fun car. It's got low end torque. It'll do anything. It doesn't need to be rung out to the high RPMs to have fun in, uh, but it doesn't quite have the characteristics, the playfulness of these other cars. And so that's why I'm giving it last place. Now, when I say last place, like these four cars are some of the most fun cars on the market period, like regardless of price. They're a ton of fun, um, so I'd highly recommend at least checking them out. Go for a test drive, see what you enjoy, um, and if you want something with more power, you know, you're not going to find it in this group. Uh, this is more of the driver's car that, it, you know, can, can appreciate a low-powered vehicle going fast and having fun in it. Uh, that's what these things are all about, and they're an absolute blast. So thank you guys for watching, and if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.